So here we have a punch biopsy and from low power, you can appreciate that this is some type of inflammatory process. You can see that most of the inflammation is kind of located up in the superficial dermis here, interfacing with the epidermis. There's maybe a little bit of um, superficial to mid perivascular inflammation here. Um, so going in on higher power and kind of starting at the top, you'll see some areas of parakeratosis in the stratum corneum. Uh, there are also some areas of inflammatory uh, neutrophils, lymphocytes, nutri um, nuclear fragmentation, uh, cellular debris here, just kind of some nonspecific hemorrhagic crust, but there is a background of parakeratosis that you can kind of notice to the adjacent stratum corneum, and then it transitions into a basket weave stratum corneum here. The epidermis also contains uh, scattered apoptotic or dyskeratotic cells, as you can appreciate here with this homogenous pink cytoplasm. Um, there's also a very nice interface, vacuolar interface uh, change here, but underlying that even more so is a moderate, mild to moderate lymphocytic, almost band-like infiltrate going in parallel to the basement membrane here. So overall, this is an interface, lymphocytic interface process, but you also have some areas of perivascular uh, lymphocytic inflammation too, and some surrounding erythrocyte hemorrhage. And so overall, we've established that this is some type of perikeratotic lesion with an interface change, some perivascular lymphocytic inflammation, and some areas of erythrocyte extravasation also some areas of apoptotic keratinocytes within the epidermis. Uh, so clinically, this was a young kid. And if you are suspecting a pedoriasis lichenoides at variolaformis acuta or pleva for short, this would be consistent with that clinical impression. So um, the major features here, and I like to remember the acronym of pleva being P is for perikeratosis. L is for lymphocytic interface inflammation. Um, you can also consider a robust lichenoid inflammation. There are some examples that are even more lichenoid than this, but this is a good example of, a, of an interface uh, lymphocytic inflammatory pattern. E is for erythrocyte extravasation, which you can see really nicely in some of these areas. Um, v is going to be for vasculitis, in parentheses, more of a lymphocytic vasculitis, not neutro, uh, neutrophilic or leukocytoclastic vasculitis. And A would be apoptotic keratinocytes. So just remembering those key features, along with the clinical impression, would be compatible with a pleva. Now, this can have a more chronic form where the inflammation starts to die down a little bit, um, but you can still appreciate a lymphocytic interface change here, a nice vacuolar interface with underlying lymphocytes. You can see that the basket weave stratum corneum is kind of returned a little bit more, maybe some areas of compact hyperorthokeratosis and compact perikeratosis along the stratum corneum here. But this is overall a lymphocytic interface inflammatory pattern, but it's not as uh, robust as the previous example of pleva. So when clinically these patients have it for a longer amount of time, um, it should still appreciate this interface change. And you were wondering about a pityriasis lichenoides chronica, which is essentially on the same spectrum of, as pleva. It's just more of the chronic form. This would be compatible with that clinical impression. So um, you see this nice lymphocytic inflammatory process um, at the interface with good vacular interface change along the edges. And you can see some scattered melanophages too, which suggests that it's a chronic process. Um, so again, in isolation, if the clinician didn't tell us that they were suspecting PLC, we may consider PLEVA or PLC, depending on how long it's been there. Um, but this in a particular case, the, the patient had been dealing with it for quite some time. And so it made sense that it was a PLC here. Um, one other point I will mention in pleva and going back to the first case is that these can often be ulcerated. The ulcerative form, which is associated with systemic symptoms like fevers, would be called the Muka Haberman variant of pleva. So just keep that in mind. That is a highly testable entity.